Welcome to Casa Dream Team's October newsletter. So I have a ping pong ball and a red solo cup. Kristen is gonna take the ping pong ball and she is gonna try to throw it into the red solo cup to win a prize gift card to a restaurant. Here we go. Oh, oh wow, she actually did it. Here you go. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna need that back at the end of the video. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding, I'm joking. So hi guys, I'm Ben. I'm talking to you guys about video and I have a question. Kristen, how long do you think you have to capture the audience's attention in a video? Uh, 15 seconds. You actually, on average, only have about three. So if you don't capture the, audio, the viewer's attention in the first three seconds, They'll click off your video and it'll never be seen by them. So if you're still watching, we got you with that little game. So guys, like I said, you have about three seconds to capture the viewer's attention. So what you really want to use is something what's called a hook. It's basically self-explanatory. You hook the viewer's attention. So some common hooks that you can use, or you can start off your video by saying, most people don't know that, etc. Or did you know that? And then hit them with some with some information that they might not know. Or the number one mistake most people make when doing this is this and usually that'll capture people's attention and they won't click off your video once you capture the viewers attention the next part is keeping their attention and there are a couple things you can do to keep their attention throughout the whole video one is adding captions to what you're saying so if i were to say the brown dog jumped over the white fence as you can see the captions popped along up with the video as i was saying it and that helps with capturing attention as well another thing is cutting out the spaces in between words when they're spoken very slowly for example again if i were to say the brown dog jumped over the um the white fence as compared to the brown dog jumped over the uh, the white fence as you can see the second one i cut the video so there's no space and it goes and it flows along smoother and quick and more quickly. And another thing you can do is you can add graphics to your videos. For example, if I was talking about watermelons, well, here you go. Here's a watermelon right here. And it's it's a, just another tactic. And you want to keep making these cuts or adding captions or graphics, or you can even combine all of them in every few seconds or 10 seconds, depending on how long your video is, to keep people's attention. Because everyone's fighting for your attention, so the human mind is already deciphering, should I watch this or should I not? It's, you're doing it subconsciously without even knowing it. So when you know these strategies and you start implementing them, you'll see that more people will be watching your videos for longer. Hey everybody, Kara Shug, Casa Dream Team, and my job today on this newsletter is to tell you why you should invest in real estate, why it's a really good idea. So Andrew Carnegie was the steel magnet of the United States, one of the wealthiest people that ever walked the planet. And he said 90% of all millionaires become so through owning real estate. More money has been made in real estate than in all industrial investments combined. The wise young man or wage earner of today invests his money in real estate. Andrew Carnegie. So how important is money to you? I want you to take it just a second and think. One to ten. How important is money to you? A lot of people might say it's a two or a three. I need it, but I'm just I'm not a money person. But how important is financial security to you? One to ten. That's a little bit different. So when you have financial security, you're not only able to help yourself, you're able to help your family, you're able to help people in need, you're able to donate. So real estate is the way to build wealth. Give us a call. We'll be happy to talk you through and walk you through because it's a little bit scary, but we'll help you out. Thanks. Welcome to this month's market update. Really the story in today's market is around interest rates. If you haven't really been following, around, following what's going on with interest rates, the Federal Reserve is essentially trying to slow down the economy by making the cost of money higher. And as a result, it's hurting buyers' purchasing power, right? You know, if you're looking to buy in the next few months and, you know, you're worried about those interest rates, I really want to encourage you to kind of shift your focus a little bit and not necessarily focus on what the rate is, but focus on what your desired monthly payment is. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of different loan programs out there. You can buy down the interest rate. You can even ask the seller to buy down your interest rate and to hopefully get you closer to what that desired monthly payment is. And you know, marry the house, date the rate. Keep in mind that you can always come back and refinance later once, those, once the interest rates come down. So how are interest rates impacting the market right now? Well, in September, closed sales were down about 26% from last year. Uh, average days on market is right about 19 days, which is still extremely low historically, but it has gone up since last year. 
However, if you look at the median days on market, about 50% of homes sold within nine days. So sellers are receiving about 99% of the asking price. Now, if you look back the past two years or so, it was very common to see sellers were receiving well over 100% of the asking price. So things are starting to come back to normal a little bit. The multiple offer situations have slowed down. However, you know, if you're looking in the 200 to $300,000 range, there are instances where there are multiple offer situations, even situations where the sellers are still receiving over asking price. It's just kind of become the exception, not the rule. We haven't seen a significant pullback on prices yet, which is interesting. Uh, prices have remained pretty steady the past few months, but price reductions are happening. You know, looking at a national scale, 86% of active listings had price reductions last week. So it's going to be interesting to see how interest rates will, you know, impact prices as we move forward. And lastly, you know, the number of new listings is down about 18% from last year. So this is an indication to us that, you know, we're not gonna be getting a huge flood of inventory coming onto the market, which could kinda put the supply and demand levels out of whack. In September, we had about one and a half months supply of inventory, which has gone up significantly since those extremely low levels that we saw at the beginning of the year. But, you know, even looking back to 2019, we still, inventory is still extremely, extremely low. You know, if you have any questions about the market, what interest rates are doing, please give us a call. There's tons of options to help you get into a home now instead of having to wait for prices to increase, interest rates to increase. It's never a bad time to buy a good piece of real estate. Hi everyone, Eleanor Hutt here with Waterstone Mortgage. I'm here to talk to you about home ownership. Homeownership is one of the most amazing things you can do in your life. It builds wealth, it's prideful, you can have as many children, you can have as many animals. I mean, it's your home to do whatever you wanna do with it. Um, it's also just great to cel celebrate beautiful memories with your family, and you know, you can paint it any color you want. <laughs> so, um, one of the things I wanna talk to you about is rent versus own. So why should you own instead of renting? Well, number one, if you wait to buy, the cost is just gonna continue to grow. So the rates will hopefully not go up too much, but the rates can go up, and then you're looking at paying more on a monthly payment. So just to give you an example, if the rates went up a half a percent, that's only 0.50, if they went up like, let's say from six to six and a half, the cost, the monthly cost, is gonna increase your payment by $200 a month. So that's $200 times 12, times 360 months. That's a lot of money. Not to mention that the price of houses will go up, as they historically have, and that's gonna cost you more to buy the house. So, in today's market, housing went up last year 12 to 15%. Even during COVID, housing went up. So housing uh, just continues to go up and you're just gonna end up paying more. So that's one reason. The other reason is, okay, I'm gonna go over a couple things here. Why rent when you can own? A lot of people say, because I can't afford a mortgage. Well, did you know that your monthly mortgage payment most of the time will cost you less than it, what it costs to rent in today's market? Rents have jumped just drastically. They've gone up so high. I'm sure you guys have all heard that. Another holdback that people say is, because I sold my home using a short sale and now I have to wait. Did you know that recently industry rules made changes to make it easier for someone to buy a home after a short sale or a foreclosure or a bankruptcy? I just closed a deal where the buyer had a foreclosure and he was four years. The typical waiting time is seven years, but the guidelines have loosened up guys to make it easier for people to buy homes. Because I don't have money for the down payment. Well, did you know that there's down payment assistant, uh, assistance available to you? Um, many different types of down payment assistance. You can, uh, MFA is as little as $500 down. There's some with zero down. There's some with 1% down. So there's um, ways to come up with down payment. You can also use a gift from a relative. We have lots of creative ways. Um, tax season is coming around guys, that's a great way to use your tax dollars, your tax refund 
in the new year for home ownership. Another myth is because I don't have the best credit. Well, did you know that Waterstone Mortgage provides a variety of loan programs to help with credit challenged situations? We also do credit evaluation. We can show you how to get your credit scores up or you know, we could work with you with a lower credit score um, as low as a 580. Some programs will allow, allow as low as 500. So it's out there. The national average for rent right now is about $2,500. That's high guys, that's super high. Rent over the years. So over the years, this is just an example. If your rent was $1,500, after 10 years, you would have paid $180,000 to your landlord. After 20 years, you would have paid $360,000. After 30 years, you would have paid $540,000 and you would not have a single penny in the bank from that. Owning a home, you build equity, you build wealth for yourself. What a great way after 30 years to say, I've got 300,000 in equity that you could live off and retire with. So that's just for one home guys, dream big. You wanna buy investment homes. You wanna buy, just keep, keep buying and building. Kind of like Monopoly. Lastly, like I said, building wealth is just such an amazing thing and having that equity. I'll tell you a little bit about my story. When I moved to New Mexico 25 years ago from California, sold my house in California, bought a house here, and then decided when I was gonna buy my second house, why not just rent that house out? I'm just gonna keep it, okay? And then bought another house and said, hey, this is not so bad. I'm gonna borrow the, and you know, I saved up some money to buy the next house and the next house. So um, over the years, I've managed to uh, purchase a few homes and guess what? If I wanted to retire today, I could. So build wealth, buy homes, don't be scared. Don't rely on the media, guys. Do your own research. We're here to provide information. We're here to give you the knowledge and the power so that you can become a homeowner. Feel free to give us a call anytime. We'd love to help you build wealth. Thank you.